Hi, Kelly. Hello. So do you want to kick us off by just telling us um, who you are and what your role is at college? So my name is Kelly Walker and I'm the programme leader here for the Health and Social Care Department at Selby College. Fantastic. So um, just tell us a bit about that department. What sort of courses do you offer? So within the Health and so Social Care Department, we run both the early years childcare courses and the health and social care courses. Um, we have provision from level two right through to level six for our early years courses. And for our health and social care, we have level two and level three um, with the vision of having some form of HE provision in the near future for the health and social care as well. Fantastic. So you mentioned like level six and um, HE. So does that mean that people can go right through to degree level in these yeah. areas? Uh, if you were doing our early years provision, so obviously all the entry requirements and everything like that are in the prospectus. So if you need any more guidance on that, by all means, pop in and, and give us a phone call or drop an email. But basically, it doesn't matter where you are with your GCSEs, there's always a starting point. So you can start off at your level two, which is a one year programme. Everything goes well on that, then you can progress through onto your level three, which is a two year programme. Um, and then from there, you have the option to either go into full time employment into something around the early years provision. So whether it's a nursery practitioner or some form of early years provider in a school, a TA, anything like that. Um, or you might want to progress to university and you might want to go externally and go on to a university, whether it's Leeds, York, Hull, Liverpool, anywhere that takes you fancy. Or if you actually want the higher education experience, but also want to go into the world of work as well, the foundation degree option is really, really good for that. And a lot of our students do decide to stay on and take that option. And it just basically means that you can go out, you can be employed in an early years setting. So whether it's a primary school or a nursery or any form of early years provision, really. And then you would attend college. It's delivered here at Selby and it's a degree through Hull University. So it's just the same as going to university, but just the experience is that little bit different. Um, and it enables students to actually gain employment, gain those employability skills, put that theory into practice whilst going to that next level. Um, yep, and you can go from the level four and the level five early years foundation stage degree, and then you would progress onto the top up degree. Um, we've actually got students that have done that. They've started right way at the bottom at level two, worked their way through. And we've currently got um, a learner who has progressed all the way through the stages um, and she's now actually doing her PGCE. She's changed her mind. And instead of going into early years, she wants to teach early years. So she's doing a PGCE here at college and she's got some placement hours with us in the department. And it's just absolutely fantastic to see students flourish in that way. And, and your pathway may change from where you start to where you want to end up. And that's the really, really good thing about the early years courses. There's no set in stone. There's so many different avenues. As long as it's something to do with children, it opens so many doors. Yeah, amazing. And um, obviously, like that student that stayed with you for so long, I think that really shows that um, your team just build great relationships with the students as well. Um, and it must be so nice to sort of be able to see them progress and a bit like a family, really. Oh, definitely. It's lovely to see them go through that journey um, and the wealth of experience that they can bring back into the department as well. Um, and feedback from students that, that this lady is actually teaching at the moment. They really embrace the fact that she's done it so she can feel the struggles that they're feeling. But also she's currently a nursery manager herself. So she's doing a little bit of everything. So she really can embed that theory into her lessons. The students can relate to her. So it just works really, really well. Fantastic. So if people apply after today, then um, they might even have her teaching them. So how yep. exciting. Yep. Fantastic. Um, so we said about sort of level two and three. So can you do those as an apprenticeship option as well if you wanted to earn and learn at the same time? Yep, so here at the college we do offer apprenticeships as well. So um, if you are the type of learner where you feel that actually you've had enough of school, you've had enough of that classroom, you're ready to be thrown into the world of work, but you still want to do that learning, then an apprenticeship is definitely for you. One thing I will say is that you need to be very organised because a lot of the onus is on yourself. So if you know that you are an organised person, you're drived, you're, you've got that ability to be able to go off and do with limited tutor support, then an apprenticeship is definitely the way forward. Um, 
have a look around at local early years settings, early years providers, do a little bit of independent research yourself, um, find out who out there do offer apprenticeships, and then we'll put you in line with our apprenticeships team at the college and we work together to secure you that place. So, yep, it's definitely something that we do here as well. Fantastic. That's great. Um, so how are the students assessed on the level two and three courses? Um, so whether it's the health or the childcare, um, we're all assessed in the same way. So there's lots and lots of different ways that you are assessed. Um, the majority of the work is coursework based. Um, so you will have set assessments, you'll have presentation work to do, you'll have practical activities that we carry out here in the college and we will do witness testimonies for you. Um, there are some exam elements um, to both the health and the childcare courses. Um, some of the modules that you do, um, so for example for the health you'll have like a research based task for early years you have um again it's a bit like a research task and it's based on all the modules that you do um, it's center based but it's assessed externally so it's done under controlled exam conditions um but again it's you don't kind of feel the pressure like you would sit in formal exams when you're at school it's very much you're in control it's a topic that you're focusing on it's something that you're passionate about so we don't ever like students to get the anxieties of an exam in there. Yes, you still have to do exams, but we do lots and lots of work in the run up to that. We have lots and lots of practice. And because you're out on placement and linking the theory to practice, it does come much more naturally. Yeah, brilliantly. I think that'll be really reassuring. Yeah, you can tell there's going to be so much support there throughout. So that's great. Um, yeah, I suppose I really just wanted to ask a little bit about um, the connections that your um, department have with employers, you know, do people get placements and things like that? Yep, so on both the courses there are placement elements, so you have different um, requirements whether you're doing childcare or whether you're doing health. Um, so again, when you come on to programme you will get told that information in much, much more detail. So for example, the early years, if you were doing the level two or the level three, you go out um, a couple of days a week into the actual work environment. So we set up those placements for you. We have um, a placement officer who deals with all that. All our placements are risk assessed and currently up to date with all the COVID procedures and things like that. So it's very, very current and kept up to date. Obviously safeguarding is massive in, in anything and especially in early years and health. So, you know, your safety, their safety is always paramount. You are expected to have um, a DBS certificate um, check which is something that we do when you you come on to program so again we don't have to worry about doing that independently we will help you sort all that out and we have fantastic links with all local providers um, around the local area and further afield because we know that some of you you know may be coming from the likes of Doncaster, Ghoul, York way out and um, so you know we do have links as far and wide as that if you know that there is a setting near you and um, that you would like to go on placement and you think that it'd be really valuable to your education and we don't have it on program by all means if you let us know we can make those links and we do set up new placements all the time um, so yeah we do say to students that, you know, you, you're no longer a school student, you're coming on to be college, you're a young adult, you would be expected to maybe hop on a bus, maybe get a train or a car journey. So we get all that information from you when you start. So don't commit to somewhere that you know you can't get to. OK, so we just make sure that you give us all that information from the start. Um, but yeah, we've got fantastic links with schools, nursery providers, hospitals, special educational need providers, so care yeah. homes. No, that sounds really good. Um, so a lot of people will ask us about sort of entry requirements and, you know, people might be a bit nervous, especially this year with, um, you know, GCSEs all being a bit up in the air and everything. And um, so what would you say to people about sort of, um, you know, keeping on working hard, but is there anything you can say to reassure them? What happens if they don't get their maths and English, for example? The key message that I would give to any one of you is that we understand the situation that you're in at the moment. You know, we, we get it. You know, we're, we're not just teachers. Some of us are parents as well. You know, we've got children facing the same thing. And the message that I can give you is just do the best that you can do. Attend those lessons. Try and aim for those predicted grades. Remember to submit your coursework because all of this is going to have an impact on your final grade. Whatever those final grades are, as long as you know you've tried your best, you've got a starting point and it doesn't matter. The entry requirements for a level three are your five um, GCSEs that graded four and five or above. For your health, you really do be needing that English, maths and science. For early years, it's the same sort of requirements. English, maths, preferably science, especially if you're wanting to go into teaching. Mm -hmm. Now, 
if for whatever reason those grades don't come about, you know, we can't predict the future. We don't know what's going to happen. It doesn't matter. There will be a starting point for you here. It's just a case of finding the right one. So don't be scared to think, well, I've applied for this course and now I've not got the grades, so they're not going to take me. It doesn't matter. It's just a case of changing the programme. All we ask is that you keep communicating with us. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Kelly. So I think that's nearly everything other than if people want to apply, what are the next steps? Um, can you still apply for this year? Yeah, most definitely. So you can apply through the website, find the course that you want. Like I've said, if you're not sure whether it's the level two or the level three, or even if you, you're not sure whether it's health or childcare, pop them both on there. And then it'd either be myself or a member of my team that will give you a call and we'll chat about it. Just have a little think about what your future progression is. You've obviously come to us because you are interested in some form of healthcare or childcare. One of the questions that I'll ask you is, what is your end goal? Do you have an end goal? If you don't have one, that's absolutely fine. But a bit of an idea as to whether you want to be going down the childcare route or whether you want to be going down the health route. One thing that does come up sometimes is some people want to work with children, but in the healthcare setting. So if you know that you want to go into some form of social working or looking after children who are recovering from illness, or even if it's a support worker, or a specialist child a therapist things like that then it would be the health and social care route you would need as opposed to the early years route so it's just a case of doing that little bit of research yourself before you apply but by all means definitely there's still time to apply that's brilliant i think that's really good advice like you say just people knowing that just put base down if you're not sure because you know we give everyone a guidance interview date from that point and um yes. and yeah you can just chat about it more then yeah perfect yeah. well thank you so much kelly that was really helpful and um yeah i'm sure that um, there was so much in that that will be so reassuring to people. So thank you very much. Not a problem. And if anybody's got any questions or anything, by all means, contact us directly. That's not a problem. Great. Thank you. Thanks.